Salut, it's Annie. Bienvenue au corps pour aujourd'hui. Alors, so today we're talking about the year 10 exams. Now, first off, I'm really sorry that we hadn't given you more warning about the year 10 exams, but I only found out about it when that letter went out to parents. So if you read that before us, you'd have known before your teachers about these exams. So that is a bit of a pain, but don't worry. I'm really glad that these exams are happening because they are exactly what you need to get you prepared for the final push and the real start to year 11. So these are a good thing today. Now today's lesson is going to help you prepare. I'm going to talk through the writing and the homework again, but I'm going to talk and we're going to focus more on the listening exam, which is a really tricky one. Now, the importance for this is the whole reason we do year 10 exams because getting good GCSEs doesn't start in year 11. People think it does. People think it starts like in March, April when you're just before your exam start. No way. It's too late for that. The hard work for your GCSEs starts right now during year 10 summer to get you prepared and, and to be a bit of motivation for it in a year's time you will have your results today where you'll go and you'll pick up your envelope which will have the answers to what your future will be like so it's a huge year ahead of you now i've done results today right i've done it for myself for gcc a level and degree and i remember those days so well i can't remember the feeling which i'm glad about because i can't tell you the nerves but i remember the days i remember getting up i remember like the conversations i had i remember walking to school or college to get them they're such important days i've also done loads of results days as a teacher as well so i'm going to tell you what it's like on results day okay there's two ways results day can go there's two types of student the first type of student is like what you see on our picture here of the french national team winning the world cup you get those students students who are absolutely ecstatic they cannot believe how well they've done they've got better grades than they thought they would it's all paid off and they just can't they just can't believe it that's the best sort of students on results day i always look out for them because i'll know your results before you i always go to them and talk to them to congratulate them because it's so nice to see that hard work pay off now that's the first type of student and that's the group you want to be in there's another type of student yeah and they'll show up and they'll do one or two things they'll either get their envelope and they'll be like yeah well i sort of suspected this and when i talk to them i say you need to ring your mom and tell her about your grades they're going oh i don't want to do that i'm just gonna go out my mates and i'm like no your mom will be waiting for you to call her you've got to come and talk about that that's the first like type of this student the second type they come in they get their envelope they leave straight away and you don't see them again because they know and you know and everyone knows what's in the envelope they might as well not open it because everyone knows and that is the thing when it comes to results day there might be some surprises some good some bad but overall you might be one grade higher than you thought or one grade lower but uh, basically you'll know what you're going to get and you know what you're going to get because you know how hard you've worked and how hard you've revised and if you're one of those people who think maybe i'm a genius and i won't revise but i'll still get good grades guess what you won't because everyone else in the country is revising so their performance is going to be up so even if you're really clever in class and you know loads of answers and you find things easier than other people all those other people are going to be working really hard and if you don't they're going to catch up with you so revision matters individual work matters and that's why i think lockdown has been so good for you year 10 because you've had time to, to master these skills and then go for it so year 10 exams is coming first week of june what we're going to do today is focus on the listening exam on the next few slides i've just reused the slides that i sent you in an email about your revision for the writing exam so if you've already watched that you can skip the next few minutes and go straight to the start of the lesson if you don't know what i'm talking about when i'm talking about your revision watch the next few slides and then join us when we start this lesson Alors, bon courage on y va. okay year 10 so let's tell you how you can spend your time preparing for these exams over the next few weeks. So it's all about the writing exam. There's a booklet that's attached to this email I've sent you, which has got all the potential questions for GCSE, like literally every single one for your writing exam and your speaking exam. They might be worded differently in the real exam, but this is it. This is everything they could possibly ask you. Now you've all been emailed this, my class, 10AFR2, 
you've been emailed a link to your own booklet and you will need to complete it on that booklet don't do it yourself at home because i'll be checking those booklets so your exam is on module four only for so for the time being don't worry about all the other modules you just need to look at our module four questions which is what we've been doing over lockdown so just turn to the, mod, the module four page de la ville à la compagne and these are the 10 questions you need to focus on what you need to do is to prepare answers for all of these questions now let me go into that in detail about how to do that in a way that will help you revise so this is what you need to do you need to open the booklet or if you're in my class go on the link and open the booklet then the first thing i want you to do is spend 60 minutes one hour answering the 10 questions and i want you step one to do your best response possible and do it straight in this space underneath you can add more lines or take them away that's fine but just type it straight onto the booklet straight down here and that is what i've done look this is where to write where the green arrows are and over here i've got question one this is my ideal answer this is obviously a grade nine answer this is what you need to do so answer the questions in as much detail as possible that's step one spend an hour answering those 10 questions then this is step two I want you to look at what you've written, your ideal answer, which you've used your book for and like uh, you've tried your hardest for. Then I want you to really test yourself. You've got to cover up this answer. OK, so it's easy for you, right, because you can just like minimize it or whatever on the screen so you can't see it. Whatever you do, cover it up and then on a rough piece of paper, you can oh, oh, God's sake, you can type if you want. What I want you to do is try and remember what you've written and try and answer the question blind. So you can't see your answer anymore. The question is UAB2. You've just drafted your best answer. Go for it. What can you write? Here's my response. So, pour toute ma ville, well, that's wrong. Pour toute ma ville, j'habite dans l'Ouest. C'est pas le mistake de l'Angleterre. And I've forgotten a bit à Wolverhampton. J'habite dans une grande maison. I've forgotten a bit. Et j'ai m'habité ici. I think there's a bit more there. Just try and write as best you can. Then, I want you to take out what you've covered and compare your attempt to your best attempt. Then what I want you to do is check your answer and look what you've missed out. Look at this. Then my advice to you is write it out again in full on your rough piece of paper and just for the bits you've missed out, just highlight them. Or what I used to do and I did this at school is I'd write it out again. So I'd say, right, I'll write pour toute ma vie, uh, pour toute ma vie, that should be. So correct mistakes as well. Pour toute ma vie, j'habite avec ma famille is what I missed out. So I'd write that five times. Pour toute ma vie, j'habite avec ma famille dans une ville. So write out what you've missed out and I'd do it when I wrote it out again. I'd highlight it. So I could see the bits that I was missing. So then when I was practicing it again, I'd know the bits that fooled me to make them stick in my mind what I missed out. So step three, check your two answers, compare what you've got and then write in what you've got here. Write it in, highlight it, practice it. Then step four, repeat. I want you to cover up your best answer again. Oh, for God's sake, cover up your best answer again. There we go. These are my patients. Let's just do the first two lines as an example. Cover up your best answer, yeah? And then go for it again. On your rough piece of paper, can you write it out again? Go for it and see what you've got. Then repeat the steps you've just looked at. Have a little look at your best, compare it to your rough, and once again, have you got everything right? There's still a mistake there. And then this is better, I'm spelling this right now. Excellent, I've got this bit. And then, oh, I've forgotten this bit here. You need to keep repeating that until you're happy. Do that for every question. You can do it until you are happy. Happy with your answers, not happy with your lives. That's never gonna happen. I can teach you some good French, but I can't solve those big issues, guys. So keep repeating until you're happy with it and you think you've got it. Then when it comes to the writing exam, which is the main one, for year 10 
you're going to get a really good mark and you'll be able to do a top quality GCSE answer. Then when it comes to the real GCSE, if you were to get module four, with, there's a one in eight chance because there's eight modules to test you on, then you can use the answers you've prepared here that you know and you can get a really good GCSE. So year 10, that's what you need to do to prepare for the year 10 exams. So for French, you're sorted. That is your homework for next week uh, for over half term. And, and for the exam, this is what you need to prepare and this is what you need to do. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or you can email your French teacher as well and they'll get back to you. Right, this has been very businesslike. I hope you're all happy and well. I hope you're looking forward to the year 10 exams. Don't stress about them. You'll, you'll be absolutely fine if you do this work and prepare. You'll do really well and just try your best on the reading and listening. Year 10. All the best. Please email me with any questions. Good luck. Happy revision, everybody. Et voilà. Donc aujourd'hui, on va faire un peu de préparation pour l'examen euh, où il faut écouter et l'examen de lecteur aujourd'hui. Voilà. Donc ce qu'il faut faire pour moi, s'il vous plaît, inventez les dates, copiez les titres si tu veux. Et on a un contrôle de post-it aujourd'hui pour un peu de révision de vocabulaire pour module 2 qu'on va faire aujourd'hui. Donc, mettez-moi ce pause et essayez de traduire en deux toi qu'est-ce que c'est en anglais, quel 5 6, qu'est-ce que c'est en français. Mettez-moi ce pause maintenant et essayez de traduire les. When you're ready, restart me and I'll go for our answers. On y va. Hello, mes petits. Right, guys, if you've restarted me, you're ready for this. So today's lesson. We're going to be looking at your exam skills for that listening paper. It will also massively help you in the reading as well. Those are the two papers we're looking at today. I've told you everything you need to know in a lot of detail for the writing assessment. So this is what we're doing. We're going to do it with module two. The reading and listening papers will test you from module one to module four. So all of the GCSE so far. So when it comes to your revision for that, you need to get on memorize module one, two, three. Make sure those modules are key, not just module four. So in that spirit, our contrôle de post-it was looking at some module one and two language today. So let's see what we've got. Je suis passionné de veut dire I'm passionate about. It's a really nice phrase. They use it all the time for a synonym for j'aime, j'adore, ce qui me plaît. Je, me, je suis passionné de. Look out for it. Alors, numéro 2. J'ai tendance à, veut dire en anglais, I have a tendency to. Which is another way of saying like, usually I do something. I tend to do it. Numéro 3. Pendant mes temps libres, oh, c'est clé. During my free time. Such an important phrase for your writing, for your speaking. But you need to know this phrase, temps libre is your free time. They also in French use passe-temps, which means your pastimes, which is a way of saying hobbies, which are just things you do, like playing football, computer, whatever. Alors, numéro 4, 5, 6, était plus difficile parce que ce sont en anglais. Alors, that helps me too. Cela m'aide à. We talked about this. Cela m'aide à, that helps me too. It is a key phrase. So, on your writing exam, even though you're talking about your home and where you live, you could throw this in. You could say like, you've got your own bedroom, that helps me to concentrate, that helps me to do my homework. There's loads of stuff to do. Or you've got a garden, that helps me to relax after a hard day's work, anything like that. These phrases are recyclable phrases, you need to use them. La même chose avec numéro 5. What I like, c'est ce qui me plaît. Remember, we talked about synonyms. We talked about it's fine to use j'aime, j'adore, but use them once. <coughs> use the synonyms that we know. Ce qui me plaît, ce qui ne me plaît pas. They will make a huge difference to your grade. And it's something you can do so easily to have a big impact. Et finalement, numéro 6, we talked about the sport. Uh, for sport, good for the body, bon pour le corps. Good for your mental health. Bon pour le mental, you can use this in all sorts of things. Even for town, you can say there's a massive gym or there's loads of like sports pitches. Here you can play football, which is good for my mind and good for my body, etc. There's nothing wrong with expanding your answers like that. As long as you're hitting the question, that's what will get you the top mark. So we've done a bit of revision on vocab. Let's see what you remember from module two before we get into the listening. Le premier activité, je vais expliquer en français. 
Alors mes petits, donc sur le fruit, euh, pour, pour le corps aujourd'hui, sur Frog, vous avez cette activité. Et ici, vous avez 10 questions clés pour module 2. Et ici, vous avez 10 réponses. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire Alors donc, lisez la question et il faut trouver la paire entre la question et la réponse. Par exemple, quel est ton sport préféré On veut dire en anglais, what's your favorite lesson Donc, cherchez ici, quelle est la bonne réponse et voilà, c'est ici, mon sport favori est le foot. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport is football. Voilà, donc attention, look at the tricks they've used and they do the same thing in the exam. So, préféré, we know is favorite. They've not used préféré over here, it'd be too straightforward. They've used favori. This activity is a wash with little tricks like that to get you thinking. Donc, il y a deux parties. This is the first bit, trouver la paire entre les deux. Pour la deuxième partie, il faut chercher dans le texte pour le vocabulaire. Alors, le vocabulaire ici, c'est en anglais. When I was a kid, since I prefer, I like to read. Mais dans les questions et les réponses, vous avez ces mots en français. Alors, cherchez dans le texte pour les mots en français et écrivez les français ici, mes petits. Alors, je vais vous donner cinq minutes pour faire ça, d'accord 5 minutes, et si tu finis tôt, vous avez une défi additionnel. Les réponses pour la défi additionnel ne sont pas dans le texte. Il faut traduire « What will you read next summer ?» et « The last book I read was called » en français. Attention, c'est difficile. This is future tense, we've just revised with the verb to read, and this is past tense, and this is imperfect tense. Attention, alors donc, 5 minutes mes petits, when you're ready, restart the video, and I'll go through the answers. On y va! Hello mes petits, right guys, so if you've restarted me, you're ready for our answers, let's blitz through this. All 10 questions, all 10 responses. The idea is that you're looking for the tricks that they use in the exam to so just skill you up a bit. Alors donc, on y va. Le premier, on a déjà fait pour l'exemple. Quel est ton sport préféré? C'est F, mon sport favori et le fut. La deuxième, les mots importants sont depuis quand. Il dit, tu as fait l'escalade depuis quand. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire en anglais depuis quand? Since when. Alors donc, il faut chercher pour un temps et voilà depuis trois ans. Tu vois ce que j'ai fait. Alors, numéro 3. Tu préfères les sports collectifs ou individuels? Donc, en anglais, do you prefer team sports or like individual sports? Donc, une réponse va dire je préfère quelque chose comme ça. Et voilà. Et c'est ici. Donc, c'est J. Je préfère les sports collectifs. J'aime jouer en équipe. Have a look here. They've extended their answer beautifully. I prefer team sports. I like playing in a team. Why? Because I get to see my friends. Parce que on peut voir les amis, on peut rigoler. There's so many things. So think about that development when it comes to your writing and your speaking exams. Beautifully illustrated here, but it's quite short because I only had a little box. Alors, numéro 4. Quels sont les avantages de faire du sport. Donc, on cherche pour les mots avantages. Cherchez les avantages de faire du sport ici. Et voilà, le sport est bon pour le corps et bon pour le mental. Lovely advantage here. Now, the mistake people make is they say, c'est intéressant, c'est fantastique. Guys, those days are gone. Don't even think about using those answers. You've got to develop yourself. So, what's an advantage of doing sport? It's good for your body and it's good for your mind. Perfect. Then why don't you develop that a bit more? When I'm stressed, I can forget my worries. When I'm playing football, quand je suis stressé, je peux oublier mes soucis. Quand je joue au foot, perfect, beautiful. That's how you need to develop. Alors, le cinquième et numéro six aussi, on va faire les deux ensemble parce que ce sont plus difficiles. Hein? Qu'est-ce que tu fais sur ton portable et qu'est-ce que tu fais sur ta tablette c'est quoi la différence La question, c'est presque la même chose. Sauf celui-ci parle d'un portable, celui-là parle de la tablette. Alors donc, qu'est-ce que c'est en portable Un mobile phone. Qu'est-ce que c'est en tablette like, a, like an iPad or whatever. Alors donc, trouver la paire. Qu'est-ce que tu fais sur ton portable veut dire H. J'envoie les textos et les photos à mes copains. Qu'est-ce que tu fais avec ta tablette C'est D. Je vais sur des réseaux sociaux. Car l'écran 
est plus grande. Voilà. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire en anglais? Because the screen is bigger. Voilà. Alors, numéro 7. Alors, donner un avantage de se connecter à Internet. Encore une fois, on a l'avantage. Donc, quel est l'un des avantages de connecter sur Internet? Chercher les questions qui reste donc non non et voilà il est facile de faire des recherches pour les devoirs facile hein alors il y a trois qui restent now look what I'm doing for my exam technique I'm getting rid of all the ones I've already used so that I'll just narrow down what I've got so even <laughs> and you'll need to do this on the exam even if you're not sure about the answer I've now got a one in three chance so I should be able to pick up one of these marks Even if it's like a complete guess because of the skill I've used. Donc, numéro 8, tu aimes lire quel genre de livre tu qui vois te lire? What is the verb to do? Et qu'est-ce que c'est un livre? They always look the same, like a few letters separate for them. Lire is to read, livre is a book. So, what type of book do you like to read? And then this is the trick one. Quel genre de livre ne te plaît pas? And then I've got... Qu'est-ce que tu lisais quand tu étais jeune? Right, so what's the difference in between all of these? What about 8 and 10? What's the difference between this and this? The clue is this bit. Étais jeune and lisais with that AIS. This is asking you what you used to read when you were younger. So I need to look for I used to read something in the imperfect tense. This is asking me for what I like reading now. Present tense, positive. And this, ne te plaît pas, is a synonym for n'aime pas. This is asking me what I don't like. So I'm looking for something positive in the present, negative in the present, and then either positive or negative, but it's got to be in the past tense or the imperfect tense. So what do you get? C'est J-A-G, parce que j'aime lire les romans policiers. That's positive, and it's in the present tense. Numéro 9, qu que tu, quel genre de livre ne te plaît pas? C'est C, because it starts with je n'aime pas. You see, I've made, I matched up ne te plaît pas with je n'aime pas, because they're synonyms. Et donc, le dernier, qu'est-ce que tu lisais quand tu étais enfant? C'est B, quand j'étais enfant, je lisais les bons dessins. Voilà, All right guys, how well did you do on that? I told you six would give, be a good mark. Eight or more was very strong. If you got 10 out of 10, excellent effort here. You remember this old vocabulary. Let's have a closer look at some of the key vocab in this, the second task I set you. Et voici le. Donc, maintenant, il fallait chercher dans le texte pour le vocabulaire. Et je vais vous donner les, les phrases clés. Donc, when I was a kid, c'est quand j'étais un enfant. You could drop the as well. Quand j'étais enfant is fine. Since is depuis. So, depuis 5 ans is always used with the present tense. Depuis 5 ans, j'habite en France. Par exemple, I prefer, je préfère. Don't forget your accents. You can hear them on je préfère. Je préfère. You see, I go up and down on my voice. That's the little accents here, like a little house. Remember it. I like to read, c'est j'aime lire. I think we'll go to sport is good for now. Le sport est bon pour. You've got to use that. Bon pour le corps, bon pour le mental. I don't like reading. Je n'aime pas lire. Or you can say lire ne me plaît pas. Love that. My favorite sport, mon sport favori ou mon sport préféré. Social media. This is something like that people forget and it comes up all the time. Les réseaux sociaux. A réseau is like a network and social is social. So they did used to call social media social networks like that film about that bloke. And finalement, the extra challenges then, ones in the future, ones in the past. This is what you should have. What will you read next summer? Qu'est-ce que tu liras l'été prochain? So you see this in the future. I've taken my infinitive because it ends in an RE. It's an RE verb. I've got rid of the E. And then the endings, the letter is AS for two. You could also have qu'est-ce que vous lirez with an EZ on the end. I'll accept that. And then the last book I read was called, okay, this is really tough because it's in the imperfect and the perfect. So, le dernier livre que j'ai lu, which is an irregular verb, s'appelait, was called. Voilà. Excellent. If you've got an extra challenge, I'm incredibly impressed. Guys, this is a bit of revision of our vocab. What we're going to do now is we're going to practice some listening activities together. I'm going to go through tactics, I'm going to go through skills, and then we're going to do some listening together to give you the feel of what the listening exam will be like, and for you to just get, get your grips and to tune your ears in after lockdown. Alors donc, on y va mes petits. 
Hello me and Pity, right guys, so we're going to be looking at technique, we're going to go through each question really closely, we're going to talk about how to get the most out of the question, how to, how to, how to make sure you can answer it and to get the most marks out of it as possible, however, the thing you can do to most improve your exam performance on reading and listening is to learn vocabulary and get on memorize i won't name her but i once taught this girl who let's face it she was thick like and i don't just mean like a bit slow or whatever i mean like proper like couldn't do two times two in her head like without counting it on her fingers yeah and she just was obsessed with memorize bless her heart and she just was on memorize all the time and in the end she got a gcc result that i could not believe and it's because she knew literally everything. So memorize works. It makes a huge impact. And it doesn't matter how challenging this subject is. If you work on a memorize, you're going to do really, really well. So get learning, get pushing yourself over lockdown. You can set yourself a target. You can do the half an hour a day or whatever. You're just sitting on your phone anyway. You might as well do something worthwhile whilst you're doing that with your time. So this is the way to really boost your reading and listening performance technique matters as well let's have a little look at that all right so what i want to do today <coughs> is be honest with yourself no one is taking this mark in like it's just for you to see what to do all our activities today add up to 16 marks so what i want you to do is keep two scores one score is just from what you do when we do it as listening activity pure listening mark no cheating what did you do when you could just listen what did you get out of 16 put it in there then you know how this works for each activity at the end of it we'll go through the transcript we'll pick out the key vocabulary and then you can change your answers for when you've done that what mark do you get out of 16 now this should be almost full marks it won't be full it doesn't have to be full but it should be almost full if you do it right whereas this one here this could be well anything this will really test you so this will show the difference between the two and what you need to do to revise keep your marks see what you get Right guys, so you know our survival techniques. Not only am I going to just go through these, but before each activity, I'm going to absolutely drill what you need to do. So first off, the most important thing, get the most out of the question paper. And after half time, when you're doing this at home, you'll get your question paper, spend that time to analyse the question paper, to write on it to make sure you know exactly what's coming up, to highlight things, and that is what you need to do. Survival tip two is for some of the activities, like the first one we're going to look at, you can use your knowledge of grammar. What goes in the gap? Is it a verb? Is it a noun? Is it feminine, plural, uh, masculine? You need to think about all these things. What goes where? Then, when you're listening, you won't understand every word. There's going to be a lot. It's going to come at you thick and fast. You know this. You've done practice listening as loads for your end of module assessments. So, all I want you to do is work out the gist listen out for keywords do you want to make notes and write something down you think will help you that's what you really need to do don't worry about not understanding it all sometimes one word or one phrase can help give you the answer or tell you a wrong answer so make sure you stay um what's the word make sure you persevere make sure you don't lose faith fight for every mark and listen to everything you're not supposed to understand every word see if you can work it out and then five and six if you can't, don't leave a blank. Listen to what you've heard. Think about it. And you've got to make a decision. Say, right, gun to my head. Which of these do I think it is? And then go for it and trust your instincts. Because I've marked a lot of these, particularly the year 11 marks, which is really hard. And a lot of the time people have ticked one and I know they've chanced it or they've written an answer. I know they know they don't understand that answer, but they've got the answer right and they get the mark. That can be you. Likewise, a lot of the time when people change an answer, they change the right one to a wrong one. And they, it's because they didn't trust their gut and they doubted themselves and they went for something else. I bet you like when I see a changed answer, nine times out of ten, it's the right answer changed to the wrong answer, which tells you you know what you're doing trust your gut see what you can do guys we're going to look and go through um loads of activities on this <coughs> excuse me while i look at your extra challenge today 
what I want you to do is create a list of vocabulary you didn't know because the exam just repeats the same key vocab for GCC time and time and time again. I've done this for years and years and years and that's what it does. So all you need to do is keep a list of vocabulary you didn't know because chances are if you write down 10 words today, two or three of them will be in your real exam. And if you didn't know them today, but you know them for the real exam, then maybe that's two or three marks, which could be the difference. So I want you all to have a go at doing that. That sort of skill and independence is exactly what you need to get a top mark. Right, let's look at question one. On y va mi petit now. You know the type of question this is. It's a gap fill. Now, because it's on the foundation tier, this one, they will pause after each question, which should be nice, won't it? Alors donc, ce qu'il faut faire maintenant, read the whole thing. So, you're listening to a French radio station online. Young people are talking about TV. Complete the sentence by choosing a word in the box. There are words that you won't use, obviously. Alors donc, ce qu'il faut faire. Take your highlighters out and what have we got? So, numéro 1. Elodie pense que son émission préférée est. Elodie thinks that her favourite programme is. Now, this is tricky because... Even though this is masculine, it's because it's a vowel. This is a feminine word. Look, it's got two E's on the end. Préféré. So, mon sport préféré has just got one E because it's masculine. This is feminine. And then her, it says, Elodie thinks her favourite TV programme is. Well, if it's a favourite TV programme, it's just one thing. So, anything with an S on the end isn't going to fit in this gap. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. And it's not that. All right. Four out the way already. Then... I said it was feminine. So what's feminine here? Not that. That is that. Okay, so all these four can be feminine. So for the first one, there isn't oh, there isn't that great a choice. I was hoping for better than that. This is what you should have. So amusant, nul, ridicule, and original. But hang on. If it's her favourite TV programme, yeah, it's probably not going to be rubbish. And it's probably not going to be ridiculous. So I have got it down to two. Elodie thinks that her favourite TV programme is. It's either fun, funny or original. See what I've done there. So use your grammar to work it out. Go through, um, underline, highlight, think deeply about it. Look at this next one, Easy Street. What does that tell you? So see what you can do. I want you to put me on pause now. Spend one minute. You might want to time yourself. Don't have a limited time. It's not going to help you in the real thing. Time yourself. One minute on your timer, yeah? And see how much of these you can do. I've done the first one for you. Put a minute on your phone on your timer. Go through with your highlighter. See if there's any of these you think that can match. And then on Frog, I've put the listening file. We can't play it through PowerPoint because I've done that with the 12 and it's got a weird echo. It's really hard to, to listen to. So you need to click on the right listening file and listen to it. And then when you're ready, restart me. I'm going to show you the transcript and then I'll go through the answers. Good luck, guys. Let me just go through what to do again. One minute. Prepare this question. Always get the most out of the question paper. Then on Frog, you've got the listening file. Listen to it, do the activity. Once you've done that and you've answered all you can, restart the video. I'll show you the transcript, I'll talk it through, and I'll go through the answers. Good luck, mes petits. Bon courage, hein? On y va, allez. Allo, mes petits. Right, guys, so if you've restarted me, you've had your two listens at this and you're ready for the answers. Before we go through that, look at my highlighting. So we, we went through the other one and I actually like knocked off two more when we were talking about it together. Look at green, blue and orange. There is quite an overlap with these, but passionant, if you've used that, I've got bad news because it's not one that could possibly match. And let's talk about why, because remember, rule number one is get the most out of the question paper. So this is plural, this is plural, so it's got to be one of our plural ones here, okay? And then this one, Sophie n'aime pas les émissions de télé-réalité car les jeunes sont. Again, this is plural, so it's got to be either this one or this one. Why haven't I gone for fantastique or intéressant for blue? Because this bit here, if she doesn't like it, She's not going to say it's because they're fantastic or because they're interested. It's got to be a negative. So just see what I've done in my prep. I'm, I'm down to just two. So even if I don't get the answer for number three, 
I've already got a 50-50 shot. Now, it might not work, but the, the, like it makes it a lot easier and a lot more likely to pick up these small marks, which will make the difference. Numéro 4, c'est un peu différent. Encore une fois, it's still plural, so there's not a lot of separation here. Aim, mieux, is the key. Mieux means better. So to say to prefer, you can say je préfère ou j'aime mieux. I like better. She likes better documentaries parce que ils sont très quiet. It's got to be positive and plural. So it's got to be one of these two. And remember, like, it's, yeah, it's gonna, this, is, this has really helped you out, hopefully. So that was the theory. Hopefully you highlighted the same things as me. Here's a transcript. Et voilà. Right, guys, put me on pause now. I want you to read through the transcription it, and see your answers. If you want to change anything, that's fine, but you have to change the colour of pen you're using to make sure you test yourself. Remember, I want two marks from you today. One, what you've done purely on listening. One, what you've done for reading and listening. So don't worry about changing your answers, but make sure you do it in a different pen. Read it through now. Put me on pause. When you're ready, I'll break it down, we'll go through the answers, and we'll pick some nice vocabulary out of here. Alors, on y va, put me on pause. Et voilà, mes petits, if you've restarted me, you've had a look and you're ready for this, so let's go for it. Et voilà, right, I've used the highlighter to help me out about the key things, and this first one is all about synonyms. Let's go for it. Moi, je ne rate jamais mon émission préférée, car je la trouve vraiment Marron, which matches to this. It says, me, I never miss my favorite show because I find it vraiment marron. Marron is a synonym for amusant. And that is our answer. You've got to know all these different synonyms for the word fun or funny. Amusant, rigolo, rigolote is the feminine. Marron, they all mean fun or funny. You've got to know them. That's our first answer. La deuxième, Corinne trouve les films. J'aime regarder les films. What tense is this in with that AIS ending? J'aime. I used to like watching films. This is our imperfect tense. Mais maintenant, je les trouve plutôt ennuyeux. C'est un synonyme, encore une fois. What's the synonym of ennuyeux for our green boxes? Babon. They both mean boring. Do you see, like at the start, we had that match up and I matched up préféré with favori because this is what they do in the exam. They've used en mieux and they're testing your vocab with barbon. Alors, la troisième. Sophie n'aime pas les émissions de télé-réalité car les jeunes sont. Elle dit, la télé-réalité ne me plaît pas du tout car les participants sont bêtes. C'est un synonyme encore une fois. What does bet mean? And therefore, what's the synonym? Bet, c'est un autre moyen pour dire stupide. Bet means stupid. <laughs> stupid means stupid. Et finalement, Anna aime mieux les documentaires parce qu'ils sont, et dit, je préfère les documentaires car je les trouve fascinants. Fascinant, c'est le français pour le mot en anglais. Fascinating. If something's fascinating, it's interesting. Voilà, donc intéressant, c'est la, la note. Right, guys, what we need to do is mark the attempts you did when you just did listening, and then with another pen, what did you do when you read and listened, and then give yourself two marks out of four of your two colours. So when I read the transcripts, I got four out of four, and I actually got four out of four without reading the transcript. Voilà, that's what you need to do for each activity. Don't get big-headed, because you did right with this one. Next one's a lot tougher. Et voilà, donc cette fois, c'est beaucoup plus différent. I bet some of you remember doing this when we did it in class in like December or January. So here is the, what's called the cross question. So it'll be the end of a foundation paper. It won't be the very start of a higher paper because you've still got some three and four questions in a higher paper. This is grade five plus. So this is right at the top of grade five. And this is full of traps. So it's all in English, which is good. All you need to do is read through it all. So your friend Tom is talking about visits to the cinema. Choose three statements which are true. Listen to the record and put an X in three boxes. So it's a three marker. What do we need to do? You still need to prepare. Now, the trick for this question, and I'm telling you because it's exactly the same. This activity is in the exam exactly like this. This is what you need to remember. The trick here is he's going to say, Every single one of these is going to say A to F, but for most of them, is going to change a tiny little detail. So, for example, 
Tom watched a horror film. He will say, usually every Friday I watch a horror film. But last Friday we watched an action film. So he didn't watch a horror film last week. He usually watches it, so this would be wrong. And when you're listening, you'll hear horror films. You'll hear every week or something like that. But that's not the answer. So you've got to be careful. So what I do in your prep time when you pause me, you've got a minute, read through these really carefully make sure you know all the vocabulary that you can think about the tenses when they're in different tenses what tense is it see what you can do put me on pause now and prepare yourselves mes petit when you're ready restart me actually listen to the recording which is on frog this is recording too listen to it have a go at it when you've got all your answers and you think you're ready because you've ticked three restart me i'll go through the transcripts We'll break down the vocabulary and I'll give you the answers. So, good luck, guys. This is listening track two. Bon courage. On y va. Allo, mes petits, you know how this works. So, I've put the transcripts up. You've now got your completed activity with your answers. Read through this transcript really carefully. Si tu veux changer les réponses, tu peux changer les réponses, mais il faut changer le couleur de ton stylo. Now, this is where to look for those tricks. I'm going to show you a highlighted form after this slide and talk through some vocabulary to, to expose what they've done to trick you. Make sure you've not been tricked yourself now. Put me on pause, read it through, see what you've got. On your back. Allo mes petits, right guys, so now I've put the key things highlighted. I've also put some things in red, the red are the traps. So put me on pause. Have another check and then restart me and I'll go for answers on this slide. Allo mi petit, let's see what we've got then. So they do this quite often. Look how long this recording was. Look how long it is. And what have they done? One answer is the very first line. And one answer is the very last line. Now they do that all the time. They'll drop in an answer early and then they'll have you listening on to that last second. They always do it. So all these bits in the middle, all of this here and all of this here, no answer containing all of that. Look how short the actual bits for the answers are. Now, what you need to do in these bits where there's no answers is get rid of the false answers and see what we've got. So let's translate it. First one goes, d'habitude, je vais au ciné le mercredi. <clears throat> usually I go to the cinema on Wednesday. So if usually he goes to the cinema on Wednesday, he, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> he goes every week. Is that one of them? Mm, yeah, Tom goes to the cinema once a week. So C should be one of our answers. Voila. All right, I'll come to B in a second. Then he says yesterday or last night, I went to the cinema with my friends to see an action film. Okay, so here we go. Action film. Doesn't say he prefers it though, but it wasn't very interesting because the actors were rubbish and the music was too loud. Hang on, I've said B is an answer who prefers action films, but it says it wasn't interesting, the actors were rubbish, the music was loud. All of that is a trap, so you think, right, it's not B because he said all these negative things about this action film, but he then says, C'est bizarre car je préfère ce genre de film. It's crazy as I prefer this genre of film. So he does prefer action films. All of this, and look how long it is. All of this is just to sort of trick you and trap you and to give you a negative idea. Here's where the answer is. Then another trap. Quand j'étais plus jeune, j'aimais les films d'horreur. What tense is this in? What does quand j'étais plus jeune mean? It means when I was younger, I used to like horror films. So. Where does it talk about horror films? Here, he watched the horror film. No, he watched an action film, so we can get rid of that. Anywhere else, he talks about horror films. He does not like, no, okay. But now, mais maintenant, je les trouve ennuyeux. But now I find them boring. La semaine prochaine, next week, je vais voir un film de science fiction. So, next week, I'm going to watch a science fiction film avec mon frère. Okay, so... Tom is going to the cinema next week with his friends. No, he's not. He says next week he's going to the cinema with his brother. Okay, so so far, these two are crossed off. These two are answers. 
So that just leaves us these last two boxes. It's either E or F. If you've got B and C, this is looking good. And you've got EF left. Let's have a look. So which one is it? Tom does not like spy films. Tom would like to see the new James Bond film. He says, uh, Avec mon frère, il aime les films de la série de James Bond. Mais moi, je n'aime pas les films d'espionnage. So he says, he likes, as in his brother, he likes James Bond films. But me... I don't like spy films. Don't say E, uh, B, C, E. Uh. Tom doesn't like spy films. And there you go. You can see how tricky this was. Do you see they mentioned A, D, and they even mentioned F because they said his brother's looking forward to seeing the film. They mentioned all of them, but just three of them are correct. Make sure you like know these tricks that are coming. Right. If you got one out of three there, I'd be happy with that. It's now going to get tougher. We're going to go on to the toughest task. Et voilà, donc, ici il dit, listen to Morgan talking about mobile technology. <laughs> mobile technology, complete the sentence by putting a cross in the correct box for each question. So, you're going to be listening to someone called Morgan. She's not the Morgan in your year because obviously she's got friends or a boyfriend, so that's never going to happen to her, Morgan, in year 10. So, this is a different Morgan, obviously cooler one. Have a little read through. Now, think about your preparation time here. What you need to do is prepare each question, read through. She would find it hard to do without her mobile. Watch TV on a mobile, download music, replace her mobile. So I'd put some key language here. So do without, what would she put? She would say do without, it's a very English expression. I couldn't live without, I'd hate to be without my mobile phone. Watch TV, easy, regardez la télé, but who watches TV on their mobile? Download music on her mobile. I don't know how you'd find that hard unless she's got like a brick or something and that's a problem. Replace her mobile. Okay, so read it through. Make sure you prepare. Put me on pause now. Put a minute timer on your phone. Prepare this question really tightly, guys. When you think you're ready, what I want you to do is go on the next sound file. You need to listen to the sound file twice in exam conditions and see if you can answer these questions. Remember, don't leave a blank. Listen to it, go with your gut and see what you can do. Make sure you listen carefully and choose four things. Then on the next slide, I'll show you the transcript. Put me on pause, complete this activity. Well, prepare, complete the activity. When you think you're ready to look at the transcript, restart and I'll go through it. And I'll go through our answers. Et voilà, right guys, so here's our transcript. I know this is really tough. Look carefully at what's highlighted. Be careful of what's in red. I want you to change your pen. Read it through. If you want to change an answer, do it now. If you don't, if you're happy to stick with it, then good luck. Put me on pause. Check your answers. Read through. When you're ready for the answers, restart me. On you back. Alors, guys, I'm going to go through the answers now. This is so tough, but this is the level you'll need to be at in a year's time. So keep that in mind. This is where you need to be. This is what the listening exam's like. You'll have a lot more practice then. But the only way to get good is to practice, practice, practice. This is so tough. So let's go for it. The first one, do you remember I said the first thing they say is usually an answer? This is what you've got here. The very first line, she goes for number one straight away. Je ne peux pas, which means I can't. Je ne peux pas vivre sans mon portable. I can't live without my phone. So A is your first answer. She can't live without her phone. Then there's a bit of trickery to say the other things. Je l'utilise. So I, it, use. Je l'utilise pour toutes sortes de choses. Par exemple, je l'utilise pour écouter la musique que j'ai téléchargée. So you've heard this idea that like she said the verb to, to download. She said listen to music, but this isn't the answer she doesn't find it hard to do that she says that's what she uses it for then this next one this is where like the GCC all links in and you know I'm always saying it's like a skill like in science you just need to know the answer but you don't need to like adapt or use that answer for, for whatever for French you do and this is an advanced piece of grade eight to nine grammar and if you know it you've got this mark if you don't you still might get it but you've struggled Je viens d'acheter un nouveau portable, is what it says. This is question two. Je viens de... Viens comes from venir, uh, the verb like to come. So, je viens, like I'll be there. Um, but in this context, je viens de, and then an infinitive, it means you've come from doing that activity. 
So you'd say like, I've come from buying a new mobile phone, which means I've just bought it. That's how you say it. I've just in French. I've just done something. Je viens de jouer au foot. I've just played football. Je viens de finir mes devoirs. I've just finished my homework. Je viens de, I've come from doing it. And that means it is, uh, has just bought a new mobile. See, voila. Right guys, numéro toi. She watches videos on her tablet because, so she says, I decided to choose the latest model. So remember, Dani means last, but it can mean latest as well. Um, of which I am very happy. But je regarde des clips vidéo sur ma tablet parce que l'écran est plus grand. And that has got to be this on here. They always put this in. The screen is bigger. B. So she listens to stuff on her, uh, watches videos on her tablets, like an iPad, because the screen is bigger. All right, number four is the trickiest one by far. She's shocked by what? The actions of her friends, her boyfriend's behavior, a text she received, or a phone call she's got. So see what you can work out from this. Une de mes copines, one of my friends, a quitté son petit ami par SMS. Now this is a bit old school now, but a text message is an SMS. Ce qui m'a choqué, car à mon avis, C'est complètement nul. Quel manque de respect pour l'autre. Alors, so, one of my friends has left her boyfriend by text. So it's not her boyfriend's behavior. She's talking about one of her friends. This, that, me has shocked because in my opinion, it's completely rubbish. So she's shocked by the action of her friend. And she says here, what a lack of respect for like someone else's feelings or whatever. So this is what you should have. A, C, B, A. A, C, B, A. Voila. Guys, this is really tough. I'd be very happy with two out of four for these. If you've got all four, you've done amazing on this. This, this is what it's really about, like understanding this much French. If you're, obviously you're at home, hopefully you're at home, doing this lesson. If your mum or dad could hear like the French you're using and listening to and they say, do you understand this? They'll be so shocked. Show them what you can do. A really good effort here. Let's do one more higher question. Let's do the worst one. Now this is the pinnacle. If you're going for a top mark, <coughs> New Year 10 exams, and when it comes to the real thing, you'll need to pick up some marks on this question. We've already done one in this style, but that was on the foundation tier where, where there's a pause between each question. There's no pause between each question here. It's the whole thing together. So one of the most difficult parts of this question is knowing whereabouts they are in the text. And to help you, you need to read through these to get in your mind what they're talking about to listen to. So read the whole question. Amont talking about his free time. Complete the sentences by choosing a word or words in the box. There are words that you will not use. Good use of the future tense there. So here's your words. Here's your sentences. This is this is the hardest one today. So we need to think about tenses. Yeah, think about tenses. This is going to really help you out. Il va. It's another tense. Think about tenses. What you're going to match to what? What goes where? Put me on pause. I'd spend two, even three minutes preparing this to make sure you're happy. Then you need to go on the final recording for today. Do this activity, do it properly, listen to it twice, exam conditions. And then when you think you've got the answers or you've given up, I want you to restart this video. I'll go on the next slide. I'll go through the transcript and the answers. Bon courage. You're going to need it, guys. If you can get just one mark off this, I'll be a happy boy. Bon courage. On y va. Hello, mes petits. Right, guys. So have a little look at my highlighting and my thoughts. This is what you should have. So if you've got anything else in your answer that I haven't highlighted, you're in big trouble. So I love number one because there was only one possibility. I'll talk through these first and then we'll look at the transcript and two, three, four. So I'll tell you what, let's look at these now. So quand Armand était jeune, il aimait. When Armand was young, he used to like. So he used to like. There's got to be another verb there. He used to like doing, playing, watching, singing. So I've got to look through here for my verbs. And then this isn't a verb. This is singer because it's got that U in it. This is the only verb available. Therefore, 
that's the answer. So one of them, you can get the answer straight away. Amon c'est joué. So I like this. C comes from savoir to know. So in French, you don't say I can play or I can speak French. You say I know to speak French or I know to play. So je sais nager means I know how to swim. Je peux nager. They, they don't say that. You say je sais nager. I know how to swim. So Aun Armand can play de la. So de la is feminine. Piano, I know, is masculine. Guitar, la guitar is feminine. And battery is feminine. So you've got two possibilities there. Numéro 3. Armand est allé à un concert. So here, Armand went to a concert. This is the past tense. Et allé. He went to a concert. It can't be next weekend because this is the past tense. It can only be something in the past recently. So look at that. Number one and number three, I've got the answer for, even though I haven't even listened to it yet. So that's my two out of five marks in the back. And that can happen in the real thing as well. Alors, au concert, Armand a sorti Amy. This is the second time we've seen this, yeah? So we've seen mieux, uh, a mieux, which is to like better, to prefer. A sortu aimé, sortu means especially, sur means on, tu means all or everything, so above all, so especially light, the, the what, the singer, the talent, or the contacts, I already know which one that's going to be, I mean two of them could possibly be it, but only one of them sounds right, and then finally, il va bientôt envoyer, now I put this word bientôt in the middle, to stop you recognising that this is in the future tense. Il va, he is going, and an infinitive envoyé to send. So he is, bientôt means soon. So he's soon going to send a, a what? It can either be an email, he's going to send a guitar, or he's going to send a drum. Now again, I think I can work that one out. Let's have a look through. So this is what he says. Regardez. Je suis fan de musique rock depuis seulement deux ans. So I've been a fan of rock music for only two years. Mais... Quand j'étais petit, j'aimais chanter. But when I was younger, I liked to sing, or I used to like singing. Maintenant, je ne chante plus. I no longer sing. Mais je joue de la batterie dans un groupe dans lequel mon frère joue aussi. Lui, il joue de la guitare. So I said two instruments here. But he plays the drums. And his brother plays the guitar. So Armand sait jouer de la batterie, is what you need here. Numéro 3. Le week-end <coughs> dernier, nous sommes allés à un concert. So if it's le week-end dernier, last weekend, so you went to the concert recently. So see, the trick is you hear le week-end, but this is next weekend in the future, so it can't be this one. Alors, numéro 4. Au concert, Armand a sorti aimé. He says here, um, Je me suis assez bien amusé. I was having quite a good time. Mais à mon avis, le chanteur avait plus de talent que les autres membres du groupe. So, in my opinion, the singer had more talent than the other members of the group. So, you especially like the singer. And then demain, je vais essayer de le contacter par email. Tomorrow, I'm going to try and contact him by email. He's going to send an email. There you go. Five marks possible. This is a really tough one. Good effort on this, tout le monde. Allons, mes petits. So, we said at the start it was out of 16. Add up your grand totals. Remember, I want two totals. One from purely listening, one from the leading and uh, the listening, and then when you've read through and corrected your answers. Guys, it's been a super long lesson, right? And, and I know it's been a lot longer than your hours slot. That's fine. Call this revision for this week, yeah? Because you've got... The only homework I'm setting is that long list of questions. It's 10 questions, and you've got the holiday to prepare for that and go for it. Hopefully, you're feeling more ready for the listening and reading assessments that are coming your way. Um, I'll still do a PowerPoint on them and explain the activities and then set it with you. Just give it your best, guys, and you will be fine. Alors, well done for working so hard today. Merci tout le monde. À la prochaine fois. Au revoir.